two, we have three presentations tonight. And the first is Black History Month. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and kick off that presentation. And so I'm happy to welcome you all to uh, Black History Month presentation. I'm thank you, thankful you all are joining us. Uh, Black History Month was initially established in 1926 by historian Carter, Carter G. Woodson in the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Dr. Woodson selected the week of the week in February that was included that included the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, two key f figures in African American history. In 1986, Congress passed the public public law which designated February 1986 as National Black History Month, signed into law by President Ronald Reagan. The city of Long Beach prides itself on our diversity and our culture, and city council meetings have been used as a public forum to recognize cultural celebrations, and this evening we're proud to celebrate Black History Month. Earlier this afternoon, we had a reception in the lobby that featured live performances from Phi Beta Sigma Incorporated, a book signing by author Ivan Houston, music by Alvin Hayes Jr., and a performance by the YGT Brothers Step Team from Hughes Middle School. I want to thank the committee that played a role in putting all this together. So thank you to Christian, my district director, Councilman Andrews staff, Councilman Austin staff, Mayor Garcia staff, Laverne Duncan, who's president of the Andy Street Community Association, Maxie Hiltz, owner of Village Treasures, and the Arts Council for Long Beach for co-sponsoring this event. Tonight we have an amazing presentation in store for, for you. We'll start with a choir from North Long Beach-based Holy Trinity AME. Then we'll hear remarks from uh, author Ivan Houston. Finally, we'll, we're honored to have the executive director, George Davis, from the California African American Museum, who will be speaking as well. So first off, I'd like to welcome up Holy Trinity AME, who's, who's uh, here with us right now. And I have to tell you, I was, uh, I was invited to join them this past Sunday at their Black History Month uh, celebration. I heard one of the best renditions of uh, We Shall Overcome, and they were called out and invited to city council to give this to, for their, so their youth choir can come and give this uh, this rendition of We Shall Overcome. So at this point, I want to hand it over to Reverend Rethis Murray of Holy Trinity AME in North Long Beach. Amen. On behalf of uh, Holy Trinity AME Church, we are excited to have an opportunity to come out and witness to you just a tiny bit. Uh, we were ecstatic to have the vice mayor present, and uh, we're honored. We're honored. So we did We Shall Overcome, and one of the things that the young people, when we saluted vice mayor, it was a song also called I Can Only Imagine. For our young people, we want to make sure that the dreams of Martin Luther King is not just a dream, but it becomes reality. So therefore, we're going to put the two songs together, if that's okay with you. That's okay with me. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's start with I Can Only Imagine, and we're going to do We Shall Overcome. Amen.
could only imagine to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart be oh, will I dance for you Jesus or in
Come on, let's all stand up. Outstanding. Let's hear it again for Holy Trinity AME. We're going to move on to the, the rest of our, our presentation. Wow, that was a really tough act to follow. Let's give them another hand. <laughs> well, this is a special time of the year, and we look forward to it every year for at least, at least the last three or four years now. Um, I want to thank everyone who's come here to celebrate Black History Month. Um, earlier this month, I was honored to host Black Economics yesterday, today, and tomorrow at the uh, Black History Month celebration in my district, in my district at the Expo Arts Center. Uh, the three-day event brought out hundreds of people from across the city to celebrate African American her heritage and culture. And today, I have uh, the distinct honor of introducing Mr. Ivan J. Houston. He's the author of Black Warriors, the Buffalo Soldiers of World War II. Mr. Houston was born in Los Angeles in 1925 and enlisted in the Army in 1944. He was assigned to the 3rd Battalion, 370th Infantry, Infantry Regiment Combat Team, the 92nd Infantry D Division of the U.S. 5th Army, uh, also known as the Buffalo Sol Soldiers. Mr. Houston's battalion journal became the basis for a memoir he published in 2009, which I have a very assigned copy, um, and it was also uh, co-authored by um, our own Gordon Cohn here of Long Beach. Uh, the collection consists of a documentation of Mr. Houston's World War II service materials related to the creation of black warriors, personal papers, photos, and more. Um, Mr. Houston, it should be also noted, went on to become the president and CEO of uh, the largest black-owned insurance company in the Western United States. Um, and it's an honor to have him here before us today. I'm pleased to announce that uh, on Thursday, February 23rd, there will be a free screening of With One Hand Tied. It's a documentary about black warriors, and the screening will take place at the Expo Arc Center at 7.30 <laughs> p.m. And an additional screening will also take place uh, on Saturday, February 25th at 3 p.m. at the Michelle Obama Neighborhood Library. Please, uh, Long Beach, let's join me in welcoming Mr. Ivan J. Houston to the podium. Thank you so very, very much for honoring me this way. I really appreciate being able to appear before the City Council of Long Beach uh, you've done a wonderful job in celebrating black history. I, I, I just uh, would hope that other cities would 
follow your lead in doing that. Uh, you've covered pretty much that uh, I was a Buffalo soldier in World War II, and uh, the Buffalo soldiers did fight in Italy. In fact, uh, I was in the infantry in the 92nd Infantry Division. We suffered some 3,000 casualties. There are still 400 Buffalo soldiers, African American soldiers, buried at the Florence American Cemetery and Memorial in Florence, Italy. They were not returned home. They, their families had that option to return home or to be buried in Italy. So out of about 1,000 killed in action in the battles in northern Italy, 400 are still buried there. Uh, thinking about that, uh, I, I did write a poem which I will briefly read, but I, after I wrote the book, I was invited to come to Italy because we liberated a city called Lucca, and I found out that Lucca celebrates annually, and this is 70 years after the end of World War II, their liberation by the African-American Buffalo soldiers. Oh. This has been, it's an extraordinary event. I was able to be in a World War II Jeep in 2014 when they celebrated the 70th anniversary of our liberation of that city. So uh, yeah, I feel very comfortable when I go to Italy because I know the people appreciate what we did for them. When I talk to them, they say, well, you gave us our liberty. And this is 70 years ago. And here we were, black troops, in 1944, and we did not have our own liberty. So this is a poem because it's dedicated to all the Buffalo soldiers, but especially to those who are buried in that Florence cemetery. Go to Florence, if you will, see the crosses upon the hill. Notice the murals on the wall, buffaloes in arrows represent us all. Walk the green grass crosses row on row, young black men killed attacking the foe. It is God who looks upon this field, bless men who fought and would not yield. Jim Crow was there blocking their way causing them grief day after day. These men fought evil that enveloped the land. They battled for freedom with one tied hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Councilman Andrews. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Uh, for that young choir that just stood, uh, stood up and sang, I would like for every one of you young individuals to know that uh, individuals like Thelma Houston, Aretha Franklin, uh, and uh, even uh, Beyonce, they all started off in a church somewhere. So keep your dreams, your hopes alive. Don't let anyone destroy those. So I just want to thank you young individuals for coming and singing tonight. And you young men, don't you forget either. But tonight I have a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to end, uh, introduce this young man by the name of Gregory Davis. Uh, in 1999, Davis was appointed to the California State Bar, uh, uh, Bar Board of Governors. Mr. Davis received his MBA from U. Okay, excuse me. Gregory George. Okay, fine. Let's try George Davis. Excuse me. 
Mr. Davis received his MBA from USC. Now, all of us know about USC. <laughs> Going to keep that in mind, of course. Uh, uh, it has been an heavy uh, active in his community and public sector. He served as a volunteer state president in California AARP. Please give me a hand and welcome Executive Director of the California African American Museum, Gregory Davis. It's been an honor, please. It's George. <laughs> I haven't been called Gregory before, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening. It's an honor to be here, uh, represent the African American Museum, and to be part of this uh, great program. Um, and I want to thank the Vice Mayor, who was one of our speakers for the uh, African American event we had for uh, Martin Luther King Day, where we had almost 5,000 people that came. So just a, a little quick commercial about the museum, a little bit about what's happening in the cultural space in the United States, and then I'll get to the point also to talk about black history in my three minutes. So our museum is an exposition park. We were built in 1984. We're a state museum. Our board is appointed by the governor of California. Our mission is art, history, and culture. We are free of the public, and we're open six days a week. You probably know that there's a lot happening in Exposition Park. Most recently, the George Lucas Museum has decided to come to Los Angeles. There will be a $700 million construction project there, a $300 million endowment. We also have the former sports arena where there's going to be a new uh, soccer stadium. And also, USC is putting about $270 million into the Coliseum. We also have the honor of having the space shuttle next door. So a lot happening in South LA. But I want to mention that we are a state museum and we are open to all members of state, so we want to make sure that the people of Long Beach always feel comfortable and coming to our museum. Also, just a little information about how um, African American museums stack up in terms of compared to uh, other museums. And also that we are a Smithsonian affiliate. You probably have heard that the new African American Museum in DC opened up. The uh, director of that is a gentleman named Lonnie Bunch. His first job was at our museum in Los Angeles. About, uh, in the country, about 58% of the African American cultural institutions and museums are history focused. 22% are on a historic site like the Selma Bridge. 4% are libraries or archives. And only 6% are art focused. So our museum, again, has art, history, and culture. About 9% of the size of our museum, our museum is 44,000 square feet. The biggest challenge is not surprising is, is fundraising. We're blessed to have the taxpayers pay for our museum, but more of the mainstream institutions, they get about 60% of their uh, money from wealthy donors, where most of the minority institutions get 5%, which makes it incredibly important to support. Some of my friends who are uh, not African Americans uh, will always ask me, why is there an African American museum? Many of you maybe have heard about the movie recently called Hidden Figures. Have you guys heard about the movie? Yes. So growing up, I didn't know about uh, the people, the young, the ladies that were involved in NASA's post, the uh, NASA space system. That movie's doing very well, by the way. I also was a big guy with cowboy movies. The Westerns in my generation were a real big deal. It formed who we thought were heroes. Did you guys know that 25% of the cowboys in the West were African American? Also, this gentleman here is a great uh, hero uh, in World War II. I was recently watching a documentary, and it said that in 1940 there was not one African American in the United States Marines. So just think about how different our country would be if we had this information growing up. And so the lack of that information really makes it compelling to have museums, cultural institutions, and Black History Month. So again, I'm honored to be here today, and I just want to remind everyone that black history is American history. Thank you very much. So to all our presenters, thank you all for, to the youth uh, in both, both presenters, Mr. Davis, and uh, would everyone just come to the front, and Mr. Mayor, if you uh, would like to join us, and council members, we'd like to take a photo and present you with the proclamation. And as we come on up, I just want to, of course, just to all the performers, the incredible, uh, great talented group that we have here, uh, to those that shared their stories with us today and earlier in, uh, in the celebration, just thank you all. Our, our black community in Long Beach is an incredibly important part of our community, rich in history, uh, led so many of our civil rights efforts here locally to ensure that we have this inclusive 
and diverse community that we love so much today. And so to all of you, thank you for your leadership. And also I wanna specifically say to all of our employees, we have uh, many, many African Americans that work up and down our entire, uh, uh, our entire organization from uh, the top level managers all the way down to the incredibly hardworking men and women that are cleaning streets and working in our libraries and ensuring that uh, this community is safe, whether they're police officers or firefighters. So I, just, I know some of them are here, some are listening. Let's give them all a round of applause to our great workforce. They're, and we, we, cele and we, celebrate, uh, we celebrate you and the incredible history of this community uh, this month, of course, and, and, and hopefully every day of the year. So we'll come up and take a photo. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and go uh, just as the order for those folks that are.